The wiggler panel is something that you might not have even realized existed in After Effects. What it allows you to do is generate wiggle keyframes instead of using the wiggle expression. Because it uses keyframes, it's actually a lot less useful than the expression method because it's completely destructive. Once those keyframes are set, it's not very easy to manipulate but it still has some interesting properties and you might find some good use cases for it if you don't want expressions or what you're trying to animate doesn't need them and you'd rather have keyframes. So let me show you exactly how we use it. This is the Wiggler panel. Just like all the panels in After Effects, they exist in the window menu. You can find it right here under Wiggler. And I've put together a comprehensive PDF of every panel in After Effects. It's a great way to get an overview of everything that After Effects has to offer with its panels and you can download it for free down in the description. And while you're on my website, everything is 20% off for the month of January. That includes my courses, my tools, and my course bundles. So if you're interested in becoming a better motion designer or learning more about After Effects, definitely take advantage of that discount. Now we can't actually use this panel until we have some keyframes to add a wiggle to. So I'm gonna grab this box and just add some simple keyframes. We'll have it start on the left side of the comp, then move forward about a second and move this to the right side of the comp. No easing or anything, just a linear movement from left to right. Now, if I select those two keyframes, you have to select more than one, then we're going to activate all of the controls within the wiggler. First of all, we can choose what we want to apply the wiggle to. So either the spatial path, which would be the actual motion path of the object, since we're applying this to position, that makes sense, or the temporal graph, which would be how quickly it changes its value from one keyframe to the next which is essentially the speed or the velocity of that property value. Let's leave it at spatial path to start. Next up is the noise type, and we can choose between smooth or jagged, and you can think of this kind of like Bezier paths, either smooth motion or very linear jagged movement that'll give you something more sporadic. I'll leave it at smooth. Next, we can choose how the wiggle is being applied to dimensional values. Since this is the position property, it has two values, or if it was 3D, three values, and leaving the dimensions to all independently is going to wiggle each one of those values independently, even though they're together on the position property. We can also change this to just X, just Y, or all the same, and I'll show you what those options do in a minute. Next up, we have the classic wiggle controls of frequency and magnitude, or in the expression, we would call this amplitude. It's essentially the same thing. Frequency being the number of times per second that it does wiggle, and then the magnitude being how much it can wiggle in either direction, positive or negative. So I'm gonna leave this at five seconds and 200 pixels since we're dealing with the position property. And with those two keyframes selected, click apply. And immediately we can see our motion path has completely changed. Let me play this back and we have a very frantic wiggle. So that is what the wiggler does. It gives us keyframes evenly distributed between our two keyframe selection. It doesn't modify the values of those two keyframes that we initially set. It just generates keyframes between them and since we had it set to apply this to the spatial path, it's adding in Bezier handles on that motion path. Now, I think that's a little fast, so I'm gonna turn the frequency down to two and click apply again, and you'll notice that gives us something extremely sporadic. Why didn't it reduce what we had? Well, it's because it applies it to whatever keyframes we have selected down here. So what I really need to do is delete these in-between keyframes, then select these two again, and now click apply once more, and now our rate of change, our frequency, is two times per second instead of five, and we have a much smoother wiggle. Now, if I click that again, it's going to give us a different result. It's going to continue to randomize this essentially every time that I click on apply. But let's just reset these keyframes real quick. I'm going to get rid of the middle one, convert these back to linear by control clicking on them, and then remove these Bezier handles by switching to my pen tool and clicking once. So we're back to linear movement. Let's switch our apply to from spatial path to temporal graph and just click apply again to see what we've got. Now we're going to wiggle that velocity. This is gonna be easier to see if I switch to my speed graph. It's a very subtle change, but it is changing the rate of speed. Let's increase that frequency back up to five, select those keyframes again, I'll delete the one in the middle, click apply, and now we're gonna get a lot more, and you're gonna see more variance in that speed over time in our speed graph now. This is gonna be even more exaggerated if I add in some of my own speed adjustments before we apply the wiggle. And in fact, I'm gonna make this longer so that we have more room to work with with those generated keyframes. 
frame. So now my animation slowly eases in and out of this motion. And if I wanna wiggle that, I just leave that at temporal graph, set my frequency and my magnitude and click apply. It generates a whole lot of keyframes, but here is the difference that we see in that speed graph. It's now wiggling back and forth on that X value because my object is only moving on the X axis. I'll undo before we applied that and just change this motion path by clicking and dragging these handles. And let's give it another motion path just to give it even more variance and apply that one more time. So apply that wiggle. And now we're gonna see that path it takes doesn't change. You can see that reflected in the motion path. It's just that temporal change between keyframe A and B that it's generated a change in speed. And again, we can increase this. If I change the magnitude up to 2000, so 10 times as much change and click apply, now we're gonna see something that wiggles a whole lot more along that path. So that's the difference between temporal and spatial. Now let me undo back to where we just had that diagonal movement and I'll shorten this up a little bit and select those keyframes again. And now let's change it from all independently to just X. And we'll change the temporal graph back to spatial just so it's more obvious what's happening and the magnitude back down to 200. But I'll click apply and you'll see that now it's only wiggling on that X axis. The Y axis isn't changing at all. And you can see that reflected in the motion path. Those Bezier handles are completely horizontal just on the X axis. Let me undo and we'll change this to Y, apply it again, and we'll now see those handles are completely vertical. And if we set this to all the same, then we're going to get diagonal movement. So you can see that all of those handles are moving completely diagonally at a 45 degree angle. So that's the difference between X, Y, all the same and all independently. All right, let me undo one more time. We'll get back to just our linear movement. I'll even remove the easing values that we had set here. And let's select those keyframes again, change the noise type to jagged this time and click apply. And that is going to give us something that is moving much more sharply. Even though we're seeing these Bezier handles, notice how almost all of them are not smooth at all. They're disconnected. They're going to give you much more jagged changes in that wiggle. Now we've been looking at all of this through the lens of the position property, but the Wiggler panel works with virtually any property. So let me get rid of these position keyframes and we'll just bring up the rotation and I'll add in some keyframes here. So now I'm just gonna rotate about a half a revolution and notice that my dimensions options are grayed out because this is a single dimension value. I'll change this back to smooth. We also can only use the temporal graph here because there is no spatial data on the rotation property but let's change the magnitude down to say 20 and a frequency of three times per second and click okay. So now we're going to get a little bit of that wiggle on the temporal graph as it's rotating. So the wiggler can be used for any number of properties that support keyframes. Just keep in mind that it is a destructive edit. It's adding in keyframes. It's not that easy to update, but it's part of After Effects and it's definitely worth knowing about. Now, if I can give a little bit of a shameless plug to my own tool, this is Wiggle Rig. It is a free script that you can download in the description. And what it does is gives you a one click solution to applying a wiggle expression with custom controls for how the wiggle behaves. So with my layer selected, I'll just click the button and immediately I'm going to get a wiggle on the position property. You can choose whichever property you'd like to wiggle, but it's going to grab the position by default. We have this custom pseudo effect that gives us access to the frequency, amplitude, and amount, meaning we can keyframe the wiggle off and on at any point. We can change the frequency right here from two to five and it's gonna be a lot more sporadic or the amplitude up to say 500. So it's wiggling a whole lot more. There's even a section of advanced options for choosing things like splitting up the dimensions or keeping them linked, advanced features of the wiggle expression and looping, which is incredibly powerful. If I change my loop duration down to one second and I check this on, then we're gonna see every second it's going to loop. So you can see it is repeating that pattern every second. We can change this to any number of seconds or frames that we want, change things about the loop phase. I tried to make this as sophisticated as possible while being being as easy to use as possible. And like I said, you can grab any one of these properties, click the wiggle rig button and have customizable controls for that specific property. There's even more to Wiggle Rig. Like I said, there's a link down in the description if you're interested, but that's it for The Wiggler, a part of After Effects history. Don't forget to like this video. It really helps me out. Leave a comment down below if you've ever used The Wiggler panel before and subscribe if you're not already. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Ed, Ed, Bob, Bob. Ed, Ed,
Nothing was done.